Hey guys, we're headed to the Southeast Adventure Vehicle Expo. It's in Stark, Florida, and uh, we checked it. We found out about this event at the Florida Van Life Gathering a couple weeks back. But today we are headed down to Florida once again. We have about six hours, 45 minutes till we get there. About 457 miles. It is not the best weather, but today we're probably going to get there around about five o'clock and load in to camp. Now they do have events going on today, but we're going to miss those just because it's a long drive. But load in is until 9 p.m., so we're going to be fine as far as loading goes. But this is it's a really exciting event because it's blending the two things that I love, which is adventure vehicles and uh, ADV riding or adventure motorcycle riding. So unfortunately, I couldn't bring my motorcycle, maybe another time in the future. But yeah, we're headed down there today. I'm really excited to uh, see all the adventure vans, the overlanding vehicles, and uh, yeah, just to see the, uh, the vendors. And we will be down there, yeah, about five o'clock, so Hope you guys enjoy the video. Southeast Adventure Vehicles Expo. done checking in so over here on the left hand side looks like we got all the rigs over here on the right uh, over here on the left hand side we've got camping just camping so yeah I don't have really anybody to hang with so I guess we're just gonna drive over here and find a spot all right, guys, it was very windy when I got there, so I'm going to duck the mic out here just a little bit, but I'm just going to walk up this bank and show you a little overview of the event. So there's a ton of space, plenty of room to stretch out, uh, not be on top of each other, but all kinds of people into overlanding were here. There were vans here. Uh, there were truck campers, and uh, the weather was incredible. So let's go ahead and get started with this event. All right, guys, welcome to the Southeast Oakland Expo. It's uh, a little bit of a cloudy, rainy day. Um, it's supposed to stop in about an hour, so that's good. But uh, it's probably good that it's raining because it's 77 degrees. I think it was supposed to be 87 this morning before the rain was coming in, so uh, that's pretty good. Making some coffee. This guy is broken. So I moved over to old school coffee maker. Um, went and talked to, uh, hung out with uh, Livemore Camper Vans yesterday and uh, said hi to them. They have a new build that we're going to do a tour of today. So we'll do that. Um, and then we've got, I'm trying to figure out which place to go first. We'll probably do Vans first and then we'll... So we'll probably do vans first and then we'll get into uh, some of the overlanding stuff. Um, so we'll do that and then we'll go over to the Royal Enfield booth, uh, check out the motorcycles, check out the, the Himalayan. Um, hopefully I can get to ride one. I can ride one, that'd be really cool. And then we'll just swing back around and, uh, and then we'll probably do like another loop or something like that. But um, yeah, definitely want to get in a couple interviews this trip, show you guys uh, yeah, just what's out there in the community. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video today. All right, guys, so over there to my right, they have the trail. Everybody's hopping on. That would have been cool to take the motorcycle on, but we're going we're gonna to do that next year. I wonder if I can, like, hop on a ride with somebody and <laughs> go down the trail. But uh, we're heading right now over to the Royal Enfield booth. So I'm going to try to uh, check out one of these Himalayans. Okay. 
guys check it out we're at backwoods adventure mods we got mo here with us and uh, they do accessories for both transit and sprinters so we're gonna let mo take us through uh, a couple of the products you have all right um, we'll start right here this is our jerry's can holder this one will be out uh hopefully three to four weeks um, we're hoping to be able to use this on van platforms jeep platforms toyota platforms uh should be able to mount to any rear carrier okay plenty of mounting options for the rear all aluminum no welds so it's all hooked together um, the ability to hold uh, you know a variety of cans whether it be two roto packs and a jerry can two jerry cans or two front runner cans um, so that one's one we're coming out with soon. Pretty excited about that. Uh, another product we'll soon be able to offer folks later this year. This one's a little further down the line. Um, this is our scout style bumper for the transit. Um, more of a center cut, still has accommodations for a winch, solid recovery point. Um, as you can see, we've got a 12,000 worn VR Evo in there um, and it houses it just fine. Like I said, we've done pulls from it. Everything works uh, as intended. Yeah, so that's something we're super excited about. I like how it's the contour here, because mm -hmm. um, other bumpers, you know, kind of yeah. gets a little ragged. Oh yeah. But uh, <laughs> oh, and that's what they want to do. You know, we want to make it seem, you know, fit seamlessly, uh, cuts be easy. You know, and this this one kind of did the did all that. And you got protection, or at least as much protection as you can for the uh, mm -hmm. the intercooler. Yeah. Yep, as far as we can, we've exceeded Ford's requirements for airflow, so all that checks out and everything like that, so you don't have to worry about, you know, or, or are you going to do damage to the motor or something like that, make it run hot. So. Um, I kind of like how these are spaced out further, because mm -hmm. I think that was an issue, like the, the D-rings were kind of faults. Yeah, and that's that was one of the things that uh, our guys worked on for exactly that reason. You know, like you said, you start getting sensor warnings and stuff, makes it a pain to drive, so um, came back, cleaned all that up. Um, I just drove it 16 hours, um, no sensory issues, anything like that. Drove like a dream. Heck yeah. When, uh, when's it come out? Um, we're hoping uh, by July we should be able to start selling these. Heck yeah. So we'll be, be pretty excited. Yeah. Pretty excited. Um, another item on, the, on this transit we're going to be coming out with later this year, not sure on timeline, but we've got a mid-roof rack, a mid-roof ladder for the mid-roof transit folks of the world. Um, same style ladder we make for our sprinter, so solid, has the tread, able to climb it, simple, you know, and it leads up to our drifter roof rack, which we've been offering, modular style roof rack, yeah. um, able to work around your your max air fans, AC, stuff like that that you've got up top. We've got two solar panels up there, and then we've got our max air fan that's running right now. But. Yeah, those are a couple things we've got coming out. Uh, we've also got a new bumper coming out for the Sprinter. You may have seen that. We are actually doing orders for it right now. Um, if not, get over to the website and check it out. Awesome, so where can they find you, Mo? Uh, backwoodsadventuremods.com. Heck yeah. Yeah, thanks so much for the tour. Dude, pleasure, man. Awesome. Hey everyone, Nick from Van Builder HQ here. Building a DIY van can be extremely challenging, especially if you don't know what parts to buy. You can spend all your time combing the internet, trying to Google fuses, solar panels, cables, all of that stuff, just to end up with more questions after finding more parts. What if you had a list that you could download instantly and it would be a list of all the components that I have purchased off of Amazon over the last three years? A curated list of over 250 products that I have bought and personally put into van builds and it has helped me throughout my career professionally building vans. This list is over 250 curated products that I have bought on Amazon. They're organized in electrical components, heating, cooling, solar connections, and most importantly, tools. The list of tools is amazing. It's all the tools that I've needed to help me build these vans quicker and also easier. If you want to get this list, click on the link in the description below. It's going to send it right to your inbox 
and I know this list will help you out, help jumpstart your van build so that you can build the van of your dreams. Hey guys, moving down here to another booth. We're at the Dometic booth and we're with Brent and this thing caught my eye and I want Brent to tell me about it and uh, some cool uses that he's uh, uh, used it for. Yeah, thank you. This is the Dometic Go water faucet. Very simple little $99 unit, has a built-in lithium battery. You can charge it from the USB mini port um, here off your vehicle or on a battery or at your house. Combined with the water jug, you've got instant running water for your campsite. It'll turn off in 60 seconds. It's IPS 65 rated, so you could actually leave it out in the rain and stuff like that. There's a couple of magnetic pucks it comes with. So if you want to have a water jug sitting at your campsite just like this, put that on the corner of a table, a couple little taps, wash your hands, fill up a pot, brush your teeth, anything else. And um, that's pretty much it. Then you can just like turn it on its side if you don't want to use the pump. Yeah, the jugs come with multiple different attachments. So there's a spout on here so you can lean on its side and use it as a traditional spout. Two of these paired together, 22 liters of water, and they're actually the exact same footprint as a old style jerry can, but that makes it very, very easy to carry two of these side by side like this compared to, you know, a really, really heavyweight container. They've got an extra large opening that allows you to actually get your hand in there. One of the biggest complaints with water containers not be able to dry it out and clean it. So this extra large opening makes that really, really simple to do. Yeah, talk to you about these uh, other cases that you have here in the front. We've got, um, this is the pneumatic hard case. It's got aluminum front on it. Um, we've got it paired inside of here with uh, two Pac-10 portable gear storage and a Pac-20 in here. These are great for organizing anything you would like to, to have in here. Clothing, cookware, tableware. It's got a, a water-resistant zipper on it and all um, seam sealed or all seam sealed. <laughs> yeah. Sealed seams. Um, all of these you can add an additional cooler insert and actually turn these into a small lunch cooler if you want to keep some items in here. Or you can use the 50 liter box by itself. Going next, we got our cool ice fridges. These are really simple little um, ice boxes. Got a cup, three different sizes that we stock. This is the smaller one, the 13, the larger one, the 33. What I like about these is the square shape. A lot of the coolers made today have these big rounded edges and big monster handles. These are very slim and you actually end up getting maximum volume use with a rectangular shape or a square shape like this is. So even though it's a fairly small cooler, you get 33 liters of interior space in here. Um, nice foam gasket. Still is going to hold uh, ice for multiple days in there. But that shape to me just makes it easier to load in the back of a, a truck or a van or a trailer. Lastly, we've got our CFX coolers. <clears throat> Dometic is known for refrigeration. The guys who started Dometic actually invented refrigeration over 100 years ago. This is our smallest unit, the 25. They go all the way up to 100 liters. They are all going to have a Waco compressor inside of it. It's a variable speed compressor. One of the great things about Dometic is we build every component in here ourselves. So this is made specifically, everything is engineered to work with itself. Paired along with the Bluetooth app, you can actually look at the amp output of this or the amp usage every single hour by day, by week, and make sure that you're um, not bringing your batteries down too low or anything like that. The newest one is the 55 here. It's the 55 IM. So we've actually got a small little section here. It'll make ice in about an hour and a half. So it's an ultra cold little box on here. So if you want to have that evening cocktail, you can have something on the rocks. That's awesome. Brent, thank you so much for the hey, tour. Thank you very much. Have a great, great. day. You too. All right, guys, we're back in the van. It is a rainy day outside. We got some nachos here, looking pretty good, but I'll give you a peek of what we got outside. Bunch of rain. I think it's going to uh, slow down here in just a little bit. So I'll try to go out, back out and get some more interviews. So I was able to do uh, Backwoods Adventure Mods, and then we went over to Dometic. That was a really good one. I like those products. 
Um, the next thing we're going to do is I want to go back over to uh, there was a drawer, like a drawer systems booth, and I'm going to interview him about the drawer systems. Took a good, lot of photos of that, um, so I really enjoy that. Uh, looking forward to that one, and then we'll probably swing around and do a couple more. Uh, that might be it for the day um, because it's going to be one o'clock here in a little bit, and uh, depending on the rain, we'll see. But uh, so far, a lot of cool products. All right, guys, I'm over here with Chad. He is from drawersystems.com, and I wanted to, uh, I walked by this van, and this caught my attention. It's uh, extremely good attention to detail, and uh, it's uh, just a really cool product, so I wanted to showcase that to you, but Chad, take it away. Tell me uh, about your product. What's up, guys? So Chad, he already mentioned drawersystems.com. Drawersystems I started out building drawer systems for uh, Overland SUVs, and it kind of gradually morphed into uh, van building. Started with the E350 uh, and then ProMast, a couple ProMasters, and then behind me is a 2022 uh, Sprinter 4x4 uh, that I just finished one week ago from today, from this show. And the design was kind of an open format plan around where the electronics are exposed. We're gonna have to close the door because of the rain, but yeah, yeah. Electronics exposed, water exposed, and everything's coated in Raptor liner. So two-part Raptor liner. And we wanted utilitarian, like just be able to, you know, take your five-foot drawer slide out, locking slides, get your stuff, slide it back in, and then easy, easy access. Easy access to electrical, easy access to the water. So let's close this up real quick. Yeah, I remember I got a bunch of photos of this. Uh, free rain. Yeah. You guys can see we're we're dealing with the rain, so uh, bear with us. Um, so yeah, so we're under the awning here, and the concept for this build, again, Overland style, you have the Snowmaster fridge exposed. Uh, it's a beautiful fridge, so we didn't want to hide it. And then here, drawer system, the, the whole system was built around the fridge, the sink, and a queen, a full queen size mattress, uh, so that they, you know super comfortable for sleeping. Six inch mattress. Uh, we have the standard swivel seat, lagoon table, and then for water heating, we have a four gallon electric Bosch hot water heater, uh, electrical 400 amp hour lithium battery, 400 watts of solar, Red Arc Red Vision system, uh, plenty plenty of power for their, for, the, for their needs, and it, it works great. Water heater heats up in about 15 minutes. Uh, take nice hot showers at camp. Uh, 40 gallons of onboard water, 20 gallons of, of gray water holding underneath. And then, yeah, plenty of storage. It's all built, built around storage. Um, as far as the cabinets and everything go, uh, besides being one off, do you, are you doing uh, modules? I'm not yet, good point. Mm -hmm. um, I will be at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, everything is custom built. Uh, eventually, I'll be building like this module, sure. the kitchen module, if this is something that you like, this will be able to be built, um, not to spec, but just say, okay, this is, you know, your fridge will just drop right in, inside of it. So sure. that's the idea moving forward, 100%. Is there a trick to getting the Raptor liners so even? Uh, lots of practice, <laughs> uh, lots of practice. You have to play around with the, the pressure in your air compressor. Mm -hmm. And then what I find also is backing, so, the first two coats really don't matter, but the third coat is where you get the evenness. So that third coat is key. And back on the third coat, you gotta keep your hand as steady as possible and back away farther than you are in the first two coats. Gotcha. So that gets your gets rid of the blotchiness. Because if you've shot with Raptor before at home, you know that you if you stay too close on one spot, you'll get a blotch. Yeah. You know, it gets really shiny over you know, you get way too much paint on it. So Lots of practice. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and what else? Oh, um, for the roof, we have, uh, um, what do you have? A Backwards Adventure Mods uh, roof rack up here. Mm -hmm. Again, 400 watts of solar. And I built a walkable deck around the, nice. the Max Air vent. So you can walk up there. And eventually what we'll be doing is, is adding some roam boxes up there for additional storage. Nice, yep. nice. Now we have something behind me here. That is, uh, really <laughs> My cool. pride and joy. Hold on, let me <laughs> let me get rid of these chairs here. Nice. And is it Chevy Astro? 
This is a Chevy Half-Stro van. Half so it, <laughs> it was a 2003 Chevy Astro. Um, I found it on OfferUp. It was already cut in half. It already had a trailer tongue, but this was completely open. It was, it was I'll, I'll send you pictures so you can put it in your video. Yeah. This was completely open. There was plywood here. Uh, it just, I'm driving down the highway and the wind, I didn't know if it was gonna make it home, to be honest. I had to totally reinforce the bottom. Uh, the trailer tongue, uh, it's, held, it's attached with 12 grade 8 screws, not screws, 12 grade 8 bolts attached directly to the frame. I upgraded the leaf springs, upgraded the suspension. I, I have a, I tow it with a 2008 Land Rover LR3, so I put matching wheels and tires, so I have Land Rover wheels on there. Uh, and then again, Raptor liner. So I repainted the entire thing with white Raptor liner up top, black Raptor liner on the bottom added a front runner roof rack on the top we have the smitty built uh, xl four person tent and then added l track here we hang our towels and things at camp eventually my water system uh, i have a whole idea for a sink system will go here deployed at camp obviously uh, power in water in uh, pelican case for storage and then in the back uh, simple drawer system, cutting board table, simple drawer system with a cutting board or a prep table, 12 volt fridge, um, temporary electrical system right now, but it really, it works great for, for, you know, five, five day trips. I have 200 amp hour of battery underneath that feeds this. And I also have a 200 watt solar panel that, that I can deploy if necessary. Nice. Um, it's not done yet, but it's it's pretty close. I plan on putting a, a cook partner stove here that flips down. Yeah, yeah. So you'll have a stove here in the door, and then in this door will be uh, like a bar for bottles and glassware, <laughs> you know, for the adult beverages at nice. night. And then swinging around this, oh, actually up top, this is actually pretty, so again, I said it wasn't done, but pr thinking about needs uh, is, I, I love doing that before, before I finish a build. So. I have four ports up here and they're the SAE type style port. So I'm gonna have one dedicated for solar, for a solar panel, one dedicated for an exterior light on the driver, one for exterior light on passenger, and then one will feed power into the rooftop tent. Nice. So when at night you have, you can charge your devices, run fans, whatever, off your house system. And then on this side, um, have a standard awning right now. I'm gonna be switching that out for a 270 awning in the future so I have protection in the back. And then I uh, have the ARB awning room that goes here so you get additional yeah. space. And then um, custom made shoe rack uh, that acts as a shoe rack, towel holder, and toiletry bin. Yeah. Um, we have three kids and believe it or not, five people travel out of this thing and we've camped for two weeks and had no problems. So we have plenty of storage. This turns into a full size bed. This is a, a six foot RV uh, jackknife sofa that turns into a bed in like two seconds. Wow. So usually my wife and the little one will sleep here and then I'll sleep up top with the two big ones. And then whenever we get to campgrounds that actually have power, if you look in here, we have, AC. We have the window AC unit, but I didn't want it to look like a window AC unit. So I designed and built, I bought this, this toolbox and built a flange right. so that the AC is hidden inside the toolbox. That's great. And then, so we get to camp, we can just leave this open yeah. uh, for AC. That's great. Um, show me this camp stove over here. Yeah. Okay. So this is, uh, this idea actually came out because we had a 20 foot travel trailer that did not have an outdoor kitchen and we like to cook outside when we're camping so my buddy one of my best friends is an eagle scout or was an eagle scout in the boy scouts and they used to have truck boxes so this the idea behind this is this is my modern day version of a truck box so inside you have all of your your stuff for cooking utensil drawer Everything's here. This is a griddle, a 22 inch griddle. That, you know, everything folds down. We have these 
flip down stainless steel shelf brackets, aluminum handles, and this is quarter quarter inch marine grade. It's called starboard for boats, um, but it's a it's like a HDPE plastic, um, and it makes great side tables. Yeah, yeah. So it's like cutting board material, and again painted with Raptor liner, and even with the rain, it barely gets any water in there. Um, not worry about it. And then everything here is, uh, I just use tongue oil uh, to coat all that. So, And then we have a Amazon special uh, yeah. water system. We've got the same one in my van. It's very simple. So easy. It's super cheap. You can have the whole thing for like, you know, with the water, water pump, water tank, the hose and this, you're looking at like 40 bucks and you can have running water um, at camp. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a so this build is you know this is what you can do for something with a lower end budget you know get creative get out there and go camping and then something like the Sprinter four by that's the that's the max that's the ultimate so okay. you know there's so many different ways to do it but you know we do the same thing we mm -hmm. we come we hang out we sit outside we cook we have cook offs. <laughs> yeah, we have the fires going. It's nice, awesome. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Chad, thank you so much for the tour. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey guys, we're at the Faster Flight booth, and uh, I got Lewis over here, yep. and he's going to walk me through uh, their uh, inflation, deflation air system. So this would be like for your adventure rig. Uh, in my case, where you're trying to inflate and deflate four tires at the same time, kind of save some time. Uh, but I came over here because he's got a couple of features with his system that I haven't seen before and I'm gonna have him uh, Yeah, walk us through it. So yep. how's it going Lewis? It's going good. Uh, a little wet out here today. A little windy yesterday, yep. but yep. we're hanging in there um, So yeah, this is the four tire air system. I got it displayed on the back of the Tacoma here um, We do all four tires at the same time. Uh, we do have two tire kits over there, which uh, you can show if you'd like but uh, What we're talking about here is the four tire system uh, pretty simple you plug it into each tire around and then you use the center manifold to deflate um, but yes it'll yeah, deflate so it's, it'll it's inflate it'll thing. equalize all four tires at the same time just this from the weight of the vehicle four. sitting on all fours and pressuring all that air through this system gotcha yep. and uh, show me some of the unique features that you guys have on your system so right this on. this system uses right? hall tech air chucks this is similar throughout the throughout the uh, I guess the market right we uh, we like to heat shrink our ends to keep us uh, a dual wall uh, heat shrink so that'll keep uh, keep it from bending um, and it protects the ends uh, from from any type of any type of stuff will get in it you know like you can see it's all dirty and, and, and stuff from being on the rain on the ground and rain and everything um, but yeah it'll keep it clean keep it from restrict keep it from bending and possibly crimping a hose to where it, it causes it to pop but yeah. yeah no is there anything different with the way you guys have this design so yeah we, we kind of shim up the the gauge away from the manifold just to give you a little bit more uh, distance between you know so you're not stuffing your hand in there when you're when you're uh, disconnecting but yeah it's a little bit different than than, than the rest we'll do uh, we have a, a variant where we'll put a, a velcro strap mm -hmm. on it so you can velcro strap it to the bull bar we have that actually displayed over here yeah. I've seen similar with other uh, systems out yeah, on the market. Yeah, so it's just not in the mud or Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll do like a, a wire or something and wire it around, but uh, we do the Velcro that kind of goes right over the over that um, pipe thread. So, yeah, we're all wet here. Really, so. <laughs> um, do these come separate from the boxes, or is the boxes a uh, So the, box, the boxes are just display. Oh, display? Cool, yeah. cool. Boxes just to keep everything uh, dry and wet. We, we close them and open them and keeping everything together. We we sell it with a with a hose bag, so oh, a, a circle hose bag. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I had the hose bag up there, but it got soaked because of the, the <laughs> rain here. Oh, I see the bag. I got you. Yeah. Other than that, we we do uh, onboard systems. We'll we'll custom build, custom quote systems for customers that want something a little bit beyond this. Um, we've done stuff for Earth Cruiser. We've done stuff for. Um, Arc Off Road. He's another YouTube channel. We we did a okay. what I call a taco rail kit, which I built a custom bracket to mount to the the bed rails here, and it yeah. flips around so that he can get it from the gold wing doors and operate it that way. But yeah, it's I'm a I'm a tinkerer, so you know I saw this and um, about three years ago I started building these for friends, and it just kind of spiraled out of control. You know. Thank you, Lewis. Thank yeah. you so much for the tour. Thank you. No.
All right, guys, we're over here with Hope, and she is with Alt Route Mills. So uh, I love to go hiking. You guys have probably seen it in a couple of my videos, but I wasn't expecting to see uh, dehydrated mills here, and these not only smell delicious, but we're going to learn about the story and uh, how this uh, came about. So Hope, take it away. Yeah, so nice to meet you guys. Uh, thanks for checking this out. So we produce a line of entirely plant-based dehydrated meals. Um, we use very, very simple ingredients. Uh, we have two different breakfast options and five dinner options. I always tell people at Alt Route, we really pride ourselves on what's not in the meals. When you turn over the package, you can read and pronounce every single ingredient. We don't use chemicals, preservatives, emulsifiers, being that they're plant-based. We also stay away from imitation meats and stuff like that. So veggies, grains, spices, that's it. Um, we do three different serving sizes. Our little sampler packs here, um, those are, you get one of all seven of the meals that we produce and they rehydrate to about one cup of food each. So it's meant to be a taster. It's meant to just let you try them all and see which ones are your favorite. You're gonna like some more than others, of course. And then once you figure out which ones you like in those sizes, we offer the other ones. We do single serving and double serving meals. Um, the single servings are gonna rehydrate to about two cups of food. Um, they're between four and 650 calories, depending on the meal. Um, same size package for the double serving. So if space is an issue or a valuable commodity, um, it's just a more full package, essentially. And, and for us, um, we're kind of new to the off-road and overland community. Like you do a lot of hiking, this for me was born out of a lot of long distance backpacking. I did some, some long trails, I had through hikes the AT in 2016, went southbound, made it, but food was an afterthought. I had spent a ton of time thinking about the gear and the this and the that and went so far as to like plan all of my mail drops out, right? And I knew how many breakfast, lunch, and dinners, but I put trash food in there. So by the time I got down to Springer Mountain, I was starving. Like I had lost so much weight, my body was absolutely trashed, and I was like, who would ever do this again? This is psychotic. I'd never want to spend five months in the woods again. It was a great experience, but never. And then, of course, fast forward three years later, I'm like, so that thing was actually really cool. I'm going to do it again, but I want to eat better. So there wasn't anything on the market that I found that was good enough. So I decided to make all of my own food. I wanted so to know. So beside it being uh, like vegan and not a lot of the uh, ingredients we don't want. Right. Uh, the, the way that you put these together, mm -hmm. is there a specific way it's like, you know, I need like calorie dense or... or like, That's right. Okay. Yes. So a lot of the meals are calorie dense. Um, we've, we've been very proactive in trying to get those protein ads in there as well. So the beans and rice, a complete protein as is. Our Thai curry has the chickpeas, the black beans and rice, um, bean and rice combo there. And we've been very uh, intentional about the ingredients. There's a lot of onions and garlic, so like natural anti-inflammatory type things and just like good flavor and spice and like something you want to eat at the end of the day versus something you're just tolerating, right? Um, so a lot of people that have eaten our products and enjoy our products, they're not vegan or vegetarian. And I always tell people they're amazing as is and can be whole meals, but if you're in a place where you have fresh ingredients available or you can pack out some things, you know, turn the beans and rice into a burrito, add some fresh onion, tomato, avocado, and there you go. Like my friends have used the chili for chili cheese dogs at cookouts. And, and then you bring like sausage with you and chop it up and put it into that's the, right the, yeah yeah it's a it's a blank slate kind of kind of create your own adventure with it our, our tagline is fuel your detour so uh yeah Good we're here tagline. for all of it yeah detour, I love it. yeah um what are some of your favorites before we yeah, some of our favorites, are, our biggest sellers are definitely the biscuits and gravy, um, our quinoa mountain chili, and the Thai curry. Those are definitely our three most popular meals. Um, and then kind of seasonally, depending on when you're eating them, the veggie fried rice and the um, couscous you can see on this side. Um, those are very light, so in the summertime when it's really hot out, it's like a meal that's not going to make you feel real heavy and stuff. Sure. Um, so those are great. Um, and uh, yeah. I like the size of these. I think yeah. for some reason, I don't know why the industry does this, but it's always like a two serving. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's more for like volume and right. price, but yeah. you, this is one serving is what you need. That's so right. If you want more food, mm -hmm. you'll probably add stuff. Exactly. So and yeah, yep, that, that's exactly very, it. These are very thin. Mm -hmm. They're very, yeah. very packable. That's right. Yeah, you can fold them up and like, I mean, our little samples, like some people just pack these because they want like a light breakfast or lunch and just to throw these in your food bag, like you almost don't even notice they're there 
and okay, another. So you can just buy a sample pack. That's right. We sell that as a whole, so you can explore it all. Um, but another cool thing to point out is sometimes when we're on adventures, water is a very valuable commodity, yes. right? And we don't necessarily have a lot of it. Our double serving meals, every single one of them, only take one and a half cups of water, and you're going to get three plus cups of food out of that. So you're not going to have to carry a ton of water just to cook your dinner, right? You're actually going to be able to have like a third of a liter if that and that's all it takes for your dinner and yeah um one question is uh, uh i used the wrong term here but uh like cold cooking cold soaking cold soaking. that's right yep, yep, yep. um so a couple of our meals will cold soak um it's not the preferred way to eat them sure. um the biscuits and gravy the garden couscous and the veggie fried rice do the best with it yep. just because of of the nature of how it was all dried so they will rehydrate fairly well a lot of the other ones won't um and you're not going to get the same flavor profile if you don't have the hot water in there the the flavor definitely is much much better and a lot of things are activated and stuff like that when the hot water hits it so um yeah so awesome hope thank you so much for this tour yeah thank you thanks for stopping by all right see ya Hey guys, we're over here at Livemore Camper Vans. All right, so we toured this one at the Florida Van Life gathering. So if you want to check out some detailed specs on this one, you can. But I'm just going to wrap around it one more time. So Mercedes Sprinter. This is the 170. Got a little bit of lights here. But a couple details I usually don't cover when I'm talking about these vans is like the rim size. So for example, these wheels here, they've got the uh, Black Rhino uh, alloy rims and these are 255-7017. So 255-7017. Um, I don't think they have the Fender clearance kit on there, but uh, this van is, it's awesome. They've got a little bit of a walkable deck up top, some ditch lights here, but uh, yeah, so we're going to go around here. Yeah, they're doing a tour, and then we got, we've got a ladder here, and we'll just check out the deck really quick, really quickly. And then we have an RTX 2000 AC unit, and then we got some solar up top. Ballpark 200 watts, but we'll ask Marion if they know how much how much more that is. But uh, yes, yeah, as soon as she gets talking to him, we're gonna start the tour. Message me so I can follow you back. I'm asking all the Hey guys, we're here with Marion. Live more camper vans once again, but we're at the. Uh, Southeast Overland Expo. There we go. There we go. We're gonna check out this van behind me. We did a little bit of a uh, walk around, but uh, Marion, tell us. Yeah. Awesome. So this is a 2022 Mercedes Sprinter rear wheel drive. Um, we just built it over the past three weeks and completed it just in time to bring it to this expo down here in Florida. So we're super excited to be showcasing it for the first time. Our van seats and sleeps three people. It may only appear to be two, but I'm going to show you some things of how we can bring our child along with us. So just step right up in here. And this is Wakari, our tiny home on wheels. So we, like I said, we have a three-year-old, so we needed to make sure that we had space for him to play, for him to be able to keep doing his own thing, to be able to him to seat safely. So what we did is we just move our table right here and his car seat straps are down here. And these are bolted down to the exterior framing of the van so that his car seat can strap in there safely. And whenever we are sitting or at our campsite and he needs to sleep, we have another piece. So we take away this table and the lagoon mount and we slide it in between here, completing off the bed area. And he has his own pit bed that he can sleep in. So he loves it. He has his own TV right here so that he can watch Coco Melon or whatever it may be whenever he needs. Um, and he has a sense of having his own bedroom as well. So that was super important for us in this build. 
Yeah. Awesome. Check uh -huh. out this kitchen. I mean, this it just looks like a kitchen right? at home in a nice house. Thank you. We wanted to do something a bit different. The goal here um, for our builds is for them to look like the insides of homes, not so industrial, um, off-grid. We want them to, to look like an actual home and have all your home amenities with you wherever you go. So that was the goal here was my aesthetic. This was my design. I'm very proud of it. We went with this like kind of gray and white farmhouse backsplash. We have a bamboo wooden countertop, a uh, different from our typical butcher block. And then as you can see, we accented all of our cabinetry in this piece right here with rattan. It's kind of like a basket material. Yeah, yeah. And we overlaid it on a black platform on a, over here for the cabinets. So we have 50 pound latches for all of our cabinetry. So obviously, even though they look like real homes on the inside, they do have off-grid capability so that you can take them on rough terrain and nothing will open and pour everywhere, you know? Awesome. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And then we got uh, the Victron big control control screen. Absolutely. Oh, actually, wait, that's this a is a Garmin. Garmin. That's right. Absolutely. So it's Garmin, but it controls all of our Victron um, appliances in the back gotcha. of the van. And then so here you can see this is how we can turn off our lights, turn it back on, bedding, kitchen, and this is how we turn on and off our yeah. water as well, our water pump, excuse me. But we can just slide it here, and then all of our Victron Connect stuff oh, is right you there. you can load the app on the Garmin. Exactly. Ah. And it's easy because you literally, can just take it i don't want to snap it off the yeah, wall yeah, right now well, but you yeah. literally can just take it off of the wall it's loading cool. um, and bring it with you wherever you need to go so that is something that's super convenient and we can just plug it right into here if need be Heck so yeah. there's that absolutely very uh, homey right i know i have to with all the decor <laughs> and we opted since so this is going to be our personal van for all the expos that we're going to be visiting yeah. um we don't live in it full time but i still wanted to have as much as many things as possible to make it feel like a house so it was very important to me to have our microwave here if you're wondering where we cook we always um encourage our clients to use portable induction cooktops that way you're maximizing your space it's not always there taking up space on your countertop exactly. Um, and you can just use it when need be. So I keep it conveniently stored right here in the cabinet and boom, right there. So it's never in my way if I don't need it to be, right. you know? So yeah, we have a 130 liter fridge right here. You can see kind of all of our snacks, a little mini freezer area as well. Right. Um, this really could use something in there right Yeah. I know, sweating, but it's okay. Um, we'll be turning on our Dometic AC here very soon. <laughs> but yeah, so to keep going with the build, one of um, our, this is one of our favorite layouts, honestly, we've ever done. I think we're gonna add this to the layouts that we offer our clients, but this right here is our bathroom area, multi-use. So you literally just flip this up, it latches to the top right here, but if you can tell when it's not open, this finishes our L couch. So we just open it up, hook it in to keep it standing up. And then here we have a shower curtain and you can see with the holes for it, you literally just clip it on to these clip hooks right here and it creates an enclosure yeah. for your shower. And whenever I need to use it, I just move up my toiletries and this toilet is super lightweight, even with water in it. So I can just move it out. And that's like the bag one from the other event? Exactly. So this is called a Campo Closet. Campo yeah, Closet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Look into them. Great company. We've been using them in a lot of our builds lately. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you tell me, but I think that's a pretty big shower <laughs> um, for being in yeah. a van. It's pretty comfortable. So I have my regular shower liner. And then this is my decorative one that I have on the outside just to make sure that I don't have any backsplash um, go onto my floor or my cabinet. Gotcha, gotcha. But for the shower, we do a quick connect. So you literally just push a button right yeah. here. Um, you always want to make sure it's stopped. So I'm just double checking that I'll spray myself right now. And you literally will just plug it into here, push it, and this controls your hot and cold water. Perfect, perfect. We just have to turn on our water heater and it takes about 20 minutes. So not long at all. Super easy, but we always just plan accordingly, you know? But um, whenever we're not using this, you can simply take off our shower head right here. Mm -hmm. Boop. We have we keep this mat here and then just pack it up in here. I take my toilet, I put it back down in behind me. Nice. And then put this in here. Yeah, I mean it's it just also additional storage. Exactly. And then we have a no, whole another cushion in the front seat, sure. but this completes our bench area. So it's a whole wraparound seating area. 
we can lay out, watch TV. Last night, my husband sat here and watched the UFC fights, and I went to bed at 9.30. <laughs> it was like being in two separate rooms. So that's really important when building in such a small place, excuse me, in such a small space is to make sure you're keeping things open. Um, you want to be able to move around each other. You want to have your separate spaces because when you're in such a small space, you need to make sure you have time and space for yourself, you know? Oh, excellent. So absolutely, all these flip up so they all have storage and then like, part of me is, yeah. whoo! We just have our cushions on. You can see all the extra yeah, storage nice. in there. So that is mainly the interior of the van. You can see we have this nice cedar on the um, ceiling. Yeah, I can smell it right now. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and that's why we love to use cedar and pine, all these really natural woods to keep that natural aroma in the vans as and well. I like this division of space. Right, absolutely. So the reason we built this, although it's not backed, the rattan isn't backed by anything, it creates a little platform so your water won't backsplash over here if someone's yeah, sitting yeah, on yeah. the other side and you're washing dishes we needed like a little closure to separate the kitchen from the living area yeah, yeah. so that kind of acts you know it's like a little retaining wall and then i love this wall because to me this just it completes off from the the driving area yeah. the front cab yeah. and then this kind of is the start to the kitchen i've seen a lot of people and maybe in the future we want to do one where the whole wall you know it separates from the front and then you'll have like your little screen sliding door so that might be an idea for the future, yeah, you, you know, but um, for some reason in other vans, I don't feel like you could, but for some reason, the way you do yours, right? this is very open. You think? Because I think okay. this goes, this is very, uh -huh. uh, it's just open. So like, if, absolutely. if you close this off, I wouldn't have probably noticed. No, and just add one, just mimic it on this side. Exactly. So this is honestly, so we've built about over 70 at this point. It's kind of crazy to think about that. Wow, this 70 vans? 70 vans in over five years. Absolutely, it's kind of crazy. Um, they didn't all always look like this. At one point in our life, we dreamed of building a Mercedes. And like I said, this is our company van. It's not my personal van. Sure. Um, but I greatly look forward to traveling around in it. It's a huge blessing. And we just look around every day and we're like, wow. Yeah, look at this uh, you know? design. It's our basket wall. Absolutely, we have our little reading lights. So we sleep on a queen size bed with six inches of memory foam as well. We added flares, so a whole extra 10 inches of width on the van, so we're sleeping six foot 10, super comfortable. You can say we have the RTX um, Dometic AC up top, yeah. and then we have our Max Air Vent fan over here as well. Squibble seats. Got our van essential bug nut as well. Um, would you like to check out the let's garage of the van? Yeah, let's check out the garage. Perfect. Don't trip over the one wheel. So this is our garage. So since we're gonna be using it to travel so much, we wanted to make sure that we have as much space as possible to lug around all of our toys, our expo gear, whatnot, tables, and things like that. As you can see here on our right-hand side, this is where our whole water system is. In our builds, our typical water tank is 25 gallons of fresh water. Um, so you can see everything we have here, and then this is our water heater as well. And we keep all of our water beer conveniently placed right here. All of our vans as well have an outdoor shower using the quick connect like we have on the inside too. So you literally, we're gonna make sure this is stopped. So you just, <laughs> I know I don't wanna be sprayed, but it's a quick connect. So you literally just unbutton it and, or excuse me, unplug it, but it's just a button right here. You push and you push. And then yeah, whenever that's... you need water, do you want me to press it on? No, 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 it's good. good. I'm cool. just showing okay. um, the connections. So yeah, people, absolutely. I'm wondering how you're doing one connection with the two temperatures. Yeah, absolutely. So you have hot and cold water as well. So we are Victron certified. And so we have an electrical engineer on site always to help people diagnose their own problems. But um, we pretty much use all Victron accessories and then we use um, some SOK batteries as yeah, well. Yeah, the new uh, 206 uh -huh. hours. Yep, absolutely very sought after in the market. I'm um, super affordable too for the clientele. Um, and they're a little bit smaller, which uh, everyone loves. And they're so. serviceable. Exactly, yeah. right? Yep. I know. We love things that, you know, we can get help with. Yeah, there you got, is great. this is your AC panel, I'm guessing. Uh -huh. uh, there's the, so guys, this is the Garmin power switch. That powers up front. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so convenient, especially just to be able to take it out with you. I can be sitting outside, turn off my lights from sitting on the porch. That adding the Victron app is a game changer. Uh -huh. I didn't know you could do that. Absolutely. It makes everything so convenient so we can control it wherever we go on within a certain distance. So that is the back of our van right here. This is Wakari. Um, and yeah, so we have all of our window covers over here to make it blackout, as you can see. 
the Very essential nice. wrapped out our back panels and whatnot. But yeah, thanks for coming and taking a tour. Let us know what you think. Awesome. Marion, where can they find you? We're located in Kennesaw, Georgia. It's a suburb of, Lan of Atlanta, so just like 20 minutes northwest of Atlanta. But we have a huge shop, production line, fabrication area, and a whole client lounge. So come check us out in Atlanta. We have a 30 amp in the parking lot, and we'll, we'll be waiting for you. And is it livemorecampervans.com? Mm -hmm. Livemorecampervans.com. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok. We'll be launching our YouTube in the next couple of weeks, and we have Facebook as well. Yeah. Awesome. Thank Marianne, you so much. Thanks so much. Woo! Thanks for coming <laughs> to the expo. All right. See ya. Yeah. Hey guys, we're over here at the Deemer Box booth and we're with Dan. He's gonna walk us through uh, this portable. All right guys, my mic was cutting out pretty bad. So this is their rugged speaker, uh, Deemer Box. And essentially it is a Pelican case that has a speaker uh, built into it. What's cool is it has internal dry storage. So there's room to put kind of whatever you need in there. It's got a USB uh, inside to charge your devices. Um, it gets 40 hours of battery life, which is pretty cool. And to actually make it fully waterproof, they have a little cork plug on the inside. And uh, that keeps water out. So if you cover the outside, it keeps everything inside safe. Um, it also allows the box to float. And there were two sizes. So he's showing us the biggest size, which is the DB2. And there's also a smaller size. That's the DB1 and it only has one speaker and there's a difference in price between the two so the db2 which was the bigger one that actually goes for 299 at the current moment and then the second one that's a smaller one the db1 that goes for 250 dollars so there's all kinds of different colors that you guys can choose from you can kind of see them there on the bottom and then if you look over on the top right, they actually can customize them by hydro dipping them. You can customize them that way. And then uh, one thing he mentioned is they can actually do laser engraving. So if you wanted to do stuff for corporate gifting, for example, you can laser engrave uh, something on the front right there. And yeah, those are different ways that you can customize the Deemer box. Dan, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Hey guys, we're over here at Asheville Vehicle Outfitters. We got Meg with us, and she's going to walk us through this uh, Gladiator. So this is Jeep Gladiator. Um, if any of you guys are interested in overlanding, I know this is not van related, but this is a really other cool opportunity for you to get into if you're not into van life, but you still want to have uh, kind of all the gear and amenities in a cool package. So, yeah. What? Tell me, uh, Meg. Tell me about this truck and why you have so much stuff in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is the IUCAP canopy camper that we have on here. Um, and we really love this because, you know, we can just get to camp. Everything's already like set up and ready for us. Um, once we get there, we already have our bedding up top. We can just pull down the, um, uh, we've got the sleeping platform up there and everything's ready. Um, we've got water, uh, water tank back there. Um, so we can either get our water from here so we can wash dishes and nice. stuff like that. Um, How many also, gallons is it? It's a 13 gallon water tank. 13 gallons. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, and then we have a water pump too with a hose that comes over to our shower room um, that we've got over here. I'll just pop in really quick. Yeah, sure. We'll pull so down that bed in just a second. Um, oh yeah, you guys. <laughs> yeah, our shower room's over here. Oh, nice. Um, so that way you can use it for changing or whatever. You can also take showers there. Um, you know, put a little porta potty down there if you'd like. Um, we've got a fridge here so that we can keep all of our, you know, our food cold and everything. Over here, this is one of our favorite um, accessories. This is my favorite. This is a heater because we live in North Carolina, and um, so that way we can go winter camping. So it's a fireplace heater. Um, so that way we can camp when it's like really cold. Um, we've got a fan up top and uh yeah we've got um like oh, a yeah. power board over there um the gp tractor power board so over here we can control all of our our lights our fans um all that stuff here it's hooked up to a solar panel on the top of the truck um and we've got a second battery down here as well um that we can run that off of. 
awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we use the Red Art in some of our builds. Yeah. So we love it. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome systems. We really like both of them a lot. Control it from your phone. Yep. So cool. And uh, I can hop up there and show you how the bedding works. Yeah, yeah, I'll get out of the way. This is just a, a sleeping platform up here. You want me to take you up there? Oh, here. Uh, okay. Go for it. Okay. We still have the red button on top. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then you can put this, this part down yeah. here too so you have more space. Um, we like to leave it up so that we can use our fans, blowing cold air up there. Um, or if it's um, you know cold outside, we can use our heaters, blowing the hot air up there, which is nice. And then another of the favorites, we've also got the um, value cap shadow awning, um, which is a really easy awning to open and close. You don't have to worry about the legs um, unless it gets really windy. And then it also has the option to put the walls around the outside so that you can have extra shelter here. And that is very strong. Yeah, that's pretty strong. <laughs> yep, so, uh, by the way, uh, Asheville, who, uh, uh, who would want to get into something like this? Like, what what recreate recre that was my recreation idea twenty years ago? Is somebody doing that? They're going to choose this over maybe so, traditional yeah. camping or like even camping in a van. Yeah, I mean these are really cool too because these um, you can also put a lot of gear on top. Like you can mount kayaks up there, you can mount bikes up there, or through the hitch. Um, so you know, I mean, we've had people that are like mountain bikers go out and mountain bike and then. You can come back, use the shower, clean off with the shower and stuff, and just hang out at camp. Um, we take this out on the beach a lot. Um, so, you know, we've had people actually, you know, throw their surfboards up top um, or their fishing poles, um, throw their awning out at the beach, and then, you know, they can rinse off with the shower again. They're right at the beach. You've got all your, like, everything you need, you know, just right here. So, um, I don't know. We have a pretty wide range of customers, you know. Really, if you just want to be able to get out at camp, really easily and have like everything you need right there that's uh yeah that's a lot of the customers we sell to thank you well meg thank you so much for the tour yeah you're welcome I appreciate it. yeah thanks appreciate it bye guys all right next we're going to head on over to moxie van co now we saw these guys at the florida van life gathering did a tour of one of their vans but we're going to check out this truck on the right pretty cool rig uh it's called grid trucks uh, they're going to tell us a little bit more about it, but my microphone is still acting up a little bit, so we might chop this episode up just a little bit uh, as we go and do this tour, and hope you enjoy. Tell me about this. You guys are a dealer for grid? Yes, we are a dealer for grid trucks, which are built out of Canada, Wilderness Vans, builds them in Canada, um, and we're their U.S. dealer. We import them, and we sell them here in the United States for Wilderness Vans. Perfect. So before we get inside, I'm going to just walk around here really quick. And then we're going to ask some, a little bit of details about the truck, the build. So you guys can see this thing is humongous. We got a Ford F550 chassis. Yes, yeah, so these are built on the Ford F550 chassis. This is the single cab. We did have a double cab, which was sold currently. And we also have a coupe cab coming in next, uh, which will, the bed will be extended over the cab. And the box is a little bit different layout inside, but yeah, we build on F550 chassis and we do have uh, Dodge that we'll be build, building on next, 5500s. Awesome, 5500s. Oh yeah, so this is, yeah, this is really nice. So is this a uh, twin full? Or they're like a RV queen is what they call them. Oh, queen short? Yes. Queen short, yeah. Oh, man. Is it for a wine bottle? It's actually for a speaker. <laughs> oh, a speaker? Yeah, it's for a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, you like the JBL ones? Yep. I got you. Man, look at this. this is... Oh, no way. Yeah, the detail is all carved in. Here you go. Truck as well. That is excellent. Microwave, um, convectional oven as well. Nice stairs come down. Give you easy access to the bed. 
It'll pass through also. Yep, pass through to the cab. The layout is, is perfect, very classic. Yeah, it's very dynamic. well thought out. Use the, very, the use of space is, is awesome. Gives you a kind of open floor plan, gives you a lot of space, headroom as well. I think it's amazing they, that the ceiling, they still, they're doing a slatted ceiling in a build like this. It's really great. Okay. Got a closet back here as well. Big, big fridge. Full size fridge going all the way down. Oh, Is that a pull out? That's a fridge as well. We got a pull yeah. out. Fridge to frigo with the top fridge and the bottom freezer. Microwave. Wow. Got a closet area. <laughs> that is and excellent. Electricals in here as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Making use of all the space. Even got a closet run. A uh, coat hanger. Yep. And all the closets. The closet and the cabinetry has switches for lights as well. So lights come on, come on as soon as you open it. Um, Pull out. Wow. Yeah, we have a lot of storage, a lot of storage here underneath the seats. And this actually, the table will fold down into a bed as well. Mm -hmm. So this sleeps another person down here. Too. It's got a yeah, toe kick lighting. A lot of attention to detail in here. Kind of, is that a robotic sink? Yep. Wow. This is great. Yeah, broad arrow windows. Yeah. Is there a light in the bathroom? Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, so very big, very big bath. And that is a cassette toilet, right? Yes. It is. Stainless steel on the bottom. Yeah, you have access on the outside for the cassette. Yeah, and that's that's shower curtain. And uh, I'm guessing Nautilus. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's great. Storage, refrigerator, more storage. Very very clean shower. Stainless steel butt pan. That's what I like. So a full wet bath. Yeah, we got a skylight as well. Nice. All right, guys, the microphone has cut out once again, so do a little bit of voiceover. Induction stove, excellent storage, uh, really great, thoughtfully designed storage in this whole entire truck. Nice pull out countertop. If you guys look at the ceiling, really, really nice. That slatted ceiling, uh, very in style. Look at the cabinets. They're actually routered out. So the laminate is routered out. So if you haven't didn't catch that, go back and check that out. That ladder to access the bed was really cool. Uh, these Continental tires, uh, that's a 20-inch rim. And I think that's a 32580 R20 tire. Humongous. Got the bead locks on the outside of it. So crazy terrain that you can actually take this on. We have external shore power, and then the storage just continues. Outside of the van, we've got the uh, full extension drawer slides, and it has a locking one on the left, uh, the right hand side. In a minute, we're going to go to the other side of the truck, uh, where you can also access that, access this drawer, uh, get to it. We've got a box on the back for additional storage. Uh, we're going to come back and talk about that tire in just a second. But here's where you're going to access the other side of the pull-out drawer. You can add some additional stuff in there. Uh, that is an outdoor shower access. Um, we got your water tank fill. And then 
Um, look at this. The ground clearance on this thing is it's pretty massive. Coming over here to the left-hand side, we've got some more storage that you can use outdoor. Put some stuff in there. Uh, just massive suspension components, Fox shocks, and it's again, it's an it's a Ford F550, big old truck, bodyguard front bumper with a integrated winch. And as we come back over here to the backhand side, uh, we're going to talk about that tire. So the tire weighs so much, um, I forgot how many hundred pounds it was, but there's a winch that's actually going to, you're going to attach to the tire in order to lift the tire out of that uh, sling that's holding it, that tire carrier, and then lower it down to the ground. So really, really uh, <laughs> substantial tire. Uh, that you have to have a winch to lower your spare tire down. And then there's a ladder to access the top. But we're going to get some information as far as the website uh, where you can take a look at this truck. Awesome. Gridtrucks.us. Yep. Excellent, guys. So yeah, put that information in the video. All right, next we're going to head on over to Campers NRV. I didn't go in grab anyone to take a tour of these Ember trailers. So I just said, hey, let's go ahead and hop on over here and check out one of these trailers. Uh, smaller trailers like this are starting to become extremely popular. Um, not necessarily overlanding, in my opinion, but uh, a lot of these overlanding events, I see these trailers here. Now there are much smaller tra trailers in this at overlanding events, that's more typical. But these are uh, kind of a trailer that's in the middle between the longer fifth wheel style and the micro trailers. So uh, the finishes are really, really nice in here. I mean, look, you got a, a full size fridge. Um, it does have solar up top. You're going to have, you know, your microwave, your uh, cooktop and your sink area. It even has a, a vent fan. You got a sink, uh, nice cover on the sink uh, that does help with countertop space because, you know, you're in a small area, prep space if you want to call it. Uh, they do have um, pretty good storage in here, but you got the two bunks in the back. I'm assuming the couch pulls out and then you got the bed on the right hand side. Uh, air conditioning and skylight and again, just nice and clean. This is something that you guys are interested in. This is the sticker price for this unit. We're going to take a walk around the side. And one thing about these trailers is they're semi off road. So they actually have some type of suspension system built into the axle. So you guys can see we've got, uh, I think that's Kurt axle with the springs. So a little bit of uh, suspension. Some more trailers, expedition trailers right here. Again, very popular. A lot of the uh, Broncos. Patriot Liner. A little bit of uh, entry level trailers here. Yeah, and this is pretty much where we started when we came from the van earlier. So we got a best beefy jerky. All right, that was the last interview for this trip. So Southeast Overland Expo. Southeast Adventure Vehicle Expo. The name confuses me, but I think they're staying with Southeast Adventure. Southeast Adventure Vehicle Expo. Anyway guys, we are done. We are getting back in the van, calling this uh, 
into this trip. But um, yeah, this expo was really nice. They had over 500 people camping, uh, 85 vendors. So if you guys are looking forward to coming to this event, just know that there's a lot of people here, but there's a ton of space. There's so much room. There's, another, there's enough room for another 500 more people here. Um, I think that means that uh, the event is over. It is two o'clock on the dot. Alright guys, until next time, we will see you guys in the next video. We are out of here. Hey everyone, Nick from Van Builder HQ here. Building a DIY van can be extremely challenging, especially if you don't know what parts to buy. You can spend all your time combing the internet, trying to Google fuses, solar panels, cables, all of that stuff, just to end up with more questions after finding more parts. What if you could have a list that you could download instantly and it would be a list of all the components that I have purchased off of Amazon over the last three years. A curated list of over 250 products that I have bought and personally put into van builds and it has helped me throughout my career professionally building vans. This list is over 250 curated products that I have bought on Amazon that are organized in electrical components, heating, cooling, solar connections, and most importantly, tools. The list of tools is amazing. It's all the tools that I've needed to help me build these vans quicker and also easier. If you wanna get this list, click on the link in the description below. It's gonna send it right to your inbox and I know this list will help you out Help jumpstart your van build so that you can build the van of your dreams.